in spite of its concern with men's higher aspirations, with his soul, with the sanctity of married love, it is to the level of animals that the encyclical seeks to reduce men's sex life, in fact, in reality, on earth. What does this indicate about the encyclical's view of sex? Anticipating certain obvious objections, the encyclical declares, quote, now some may ask, in the present case, is it not reasonable in many circumstances to have recourse to artificial birth control if thereby we secure the harmony and peace of the family and better conditions for the education of children already born? To this question, it is necessary to reply with clarity. The Church is the first to praise and recommend the intervention of intelligence in a function which so closely associates the rational creature with his creator. But she affirms that this must be one with respect for the order established by God. Close quote, paragraph 16. To what does this subordinate man's intelligence? If intelligence is forbidden to consider the fundamental problems of man's existence, forbidden to alleviate his suffering, what does this indicate about the encyclical's view of man and of reason? History can answer this particular question. History has seen a period of approximately ten centuries, known as the Dark and Middle Ages, when philosophy was regarded as a, the handmaiden of theology and reason as the humble subordinate of faith. The results speak for themselves. It must not be forgotten that the Catholic Church has fought every advance of science since the Renaissance, from Galileo's astronomy to the dissection of corpses, which was the start of modern medicine, to the discovery of anesthesia in the 19th century, the greatest single discovery in respect to the incalculable amount of terrible suffering it has spared mankind. The Catholic Church has fought medical progress by means of the same argument, that the application of knowledge to the relief of human suffering is an attempt to contradict God's design. Specifically, in regard to anesthesia during childbirth, the argument claimed that since God intended woman to suffer while giving birth, man has no right to intervene. The encyclical does not recommend unlimited procreation. It does not object to all means of birth control, only to those it calls artificial, that is, scientific. It does not object to men contradicting God's will, nor to men being the arbiter of the sources of human life, provided he uses the means it endorses, abstinence. Discussing the issue of responsible parenthood, the encyclical states, quote, In relation to physical, economic, psychological, and social conditions, responsible parenthood is exercised either by the deliberate and generous decision to raise a numerous family, or by the decision made for grave motives and with due respect for the moral law to avoid for the time being or even for an indeterminate period, a new birth. Close quote, paragraph 10. To avoid by what means? By abstaining from sexual intercourse. The lines preceding that passage are, quote, in relation to the tendencies of instinct or passion, responsible parenthood means the necessary dominion which reason and will must exercise over them, close quote. How a man is to force his reason to obey an irrational injunction and what it would do to him psychologically is not mentioned. Further on, under the heading Mastery of Self, the encyclical declares, quote, to dominate instinct by means of one's reason and free will undoubtedly requires ascetic practices. Yet this discipline, which is proper to the purity of married couples, far from harming conjugal love, 
rather confers on it a higher human value. It demands continual effort, yet, thanks to its beneficent influence, husband and wife fully develop their personalities, being enriched with spiritual values. Such discipline helps both parties to drive out selfishness, the enemy of true love, and deepens their sense of responsibility. Close quote, paragraph 21. If you can bear that style of expression being used to discuss such matters, which I find close to unbearable, and if you focus on the meaning, you will observe that the discipline, the continual effort, the beneficent influence, the higher human value, refer to the torture of sexual frustration. No, the encyclical does not say that sex as such is evil. It merely says that sexual abstinence in marriage is a higher human value. 